Welcome to the Weekly Lead Podcast. This is week three, and I'm your host, Becky Tirabasi. And my goal is to inspire you weekly to be a leader who will change the world around you. And I'm going to do that in four ways every single week. The first is L. It's going to spell lead, loyal to God's word. We're going to read through the Bible in 2022. And every day on Instagram, you will see me give you today's daily Bible reading. And I'll take you every week a peek of the week to the Change Your Life Daily Bible. This is the foundation of great leadership. I believe it. I mean it. I've lived it. And I'm going to call you to it as well. E is for encourage. Encourage others to change the atmosphere. Here's the line I want you to remember about the weekly lead podcast. The E stands for encourage others that you might change the atmosphere around you every time you enter the room. What do you think of that, right? And A is for advocacy for the young generation. You know, I I like to kind of use scripture to my advantage for this one. Do you not know? Have you not heard? It says in Isaiah. But my following statement would be today's young generation is empty. They are thrilling, filling, and killing themselves with things that don't last and cannot fill their emptiness but advocates can make a difference in their lives. And D is devoted to prayer. For those of you who've known me for 10 years and 20 years and 30 years, I was on the road with women of faith, women of joy, youth specialties, and I did numerous, maybe 25 cities a year, prayer workshops in numerous cities. And I'm convinced that if you will devote yourself to prayer, the D is devote yourself to prayer, talking to God and listening to God daily, you will change the world around you. So every single week, I'm going to give you the peak of the week in the Change Your Life Daily Bible. In just 15 minutes a day, we're going to read through the entire Bible. If you can see me on YouTube, I'm holding up the version of the one-year Bible that I've been using for over 20 years. It's called the Change Your Life Daily Bible, and there's a study Bible edition now available at amazon.com, but you can use your own Bible too. And our chapters this week are in Genesis and Matthew. We read a Psalm every day and a proverb every day. So this week, my goal is for you in the Old Testament, New Testament, and Proverbs, Psalms as well, is to hear God's voice. And more importantly, not only hear it, but you don't want to miss it by being too tired or too lazy or too busy to read the Bible. So I'm going to try to fire you up. The Old Testament today is this week in Genesis, and we see the story of Jacob. But I just thought I'd read a verse to you. Genesis 35, 1 says, Then God said to Jacob, Get ready and move to Bethel and settle there. Build an altar there to the God who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. So Jacob told everyone in his household, Get rid of all your pagan idols, purify yourselves, and put on clean clothing, because we're going to Bethel, where I will build an altar to the God who answered my prayers when I was in distress. He has been with me wherever I have gone. So some of you since January 1st have been doing the Burning Heart 21-Day Adventure with me. And what is it? It's the same call as Jacob had in the book of Genesis, chapter 35, verse 1 from God. Be sold out to prayer. Be set apart in purity and be sent out with purpose. We finish the 21-day adventure this week, but it's a free 21-day adventure for anyone who wants to take it. But we can see it's built from the Word of God. Then we have the New Testament. The peak of the week of the New Testament this week is in Matthew, and we know Jesus is speaking. It's called, you know, often red letter in the Bible when you hear God speaking, when Jesus speaks. Well, Matthew, in chapter 13, Jesus is explaining so much to his disciples, but now he talks about the seeds and the seeds that are planted in four soils, the footpath, the shallow, the thorny, and the fertile soil. Well, it doesn't take much time to figure out which soil you are. 
In the psalm, you know, we're at the very beginning of the book of Psalms. We'll go through it twice in the Change Your Life Daily Bible. But this week's peak of the week of the psalm I picked was Psalm 18. It's an all-time great. It says, you reach down from heaven, Lord. You've heard my prayers. Don't you know how personal your prayers are to be to God? These psalms will give you permission. And chapter 15, Psalm 15 is a wonderful one as well. And finally, the proverb this week I've chose is Proverbs 335, and it's a leadership lesson. You'll find that the Proverbs consistently do this. The wise inherit honor, but fools are put to shame. The L in lead, the weekly lead podcast, is for loyalty to God's word. The E is for encouraging others. So at the end of 2021, I watch, I always watch the sports uh, best of the year in 2021 on ESPN. And the story about a young adult Down syndrome, uh, 20 year old and his dad to run an iron, well, to be an iron man was um, captured at the end of the year. And it was so inspirational how the father was so encouraging to this son. No Down syndrome adult had ever become an iron man. And you had to accomplish this within 17 hours. And the father got a trainer for his son. He, this was a boy who couldn't even swim a lap of the pool and he was going to have to swim in the ocean. And his goal to encourage encourage a son was to say, get 1% better every day. That's my encouragement to you. Get 1% better every day. If for 365 days you just read for 15 minutes a day, you will have gotten 1% better every single day. It would be an amazing um, feat, I think, for those of you who have never read through the Bible, but just get 1% better every day. Well, this boy named Chris, he Believe it or not, it's a wonderful story. You should find it succeeded in his uh, attempt to become an Ironman. But there was a point with about 15 miles in the uh, marathon to run that he wanted to quit. And he said, I don't want my dream any longer. And they said, call his father, call his father. And his father came in and put his arm around him. And he said to his son, Chris, you're going to be an Iron Man tonight, but you have to fight through the big pain. He was tethered to a trainer, and the trainer was running knowing they they had to make 17 hours or he would not be considered an Ironman. And about 10 miles to go, uh, Chris, the, the Down syndrome young man, starts to cry, and his trainer says, why are you crying? He said, uh, it hurts. Well, where do you hurt, Chris? He said, it's the blisters on my on my feet. And the and the coach says, those, those are fake, fake pain. Those are fake blisters. And, the, and the, Chris, the Down syndrome young man says, no, they're not. That is real pain. And I want to say that encouragement to other people is you telling them, I know your pain is real, but you can do this. You can overcome this. Let's do it together. And when I think about just asking people to read through the entire Bible in a year with this question, what might God do if we were to read through the entire Bible? I always believe that if you did it as a person, as a church, as a city, as a nation, God would do something amazing. So you must push through the big pain. And in our case, it's really just talking to yourself, not being lazy, having a plan, making an appointment with God. It's really saying, what might God do if I push through the big pain. And for some of us who are addicts or have huge goals and dreams, it doesn't even have to be a negative thing. We have to push through the big pain and we're to encourage each other. A in the weekly lead is advocates for the young generation. There's a wonderful book. And I started out by saying, you know, have you not heard, do you not know that the young generation is empty? There is a book called Hope Always by an ER doctor. And he became a Christian after uh, a while, not a Christian as an ER doctor, but seeing so many suicidal cases and overdoses coming into the emergency ward where he worked. It's a, it's a terrific book. Matthew Sleep is his uh, name. The book is called Hope Always. But here was the big takeaway for me in terms of being an advocate for the young generation. You may or may not know this, but he says asking is the first step. He said, 
My specific advice for those in the church who want to help others at risk or self-harm is this. You will not increase the risk of someone committing suicide by asking them about it. Isn't that an amazing thought that an emergency room doctor gives to you and me who care about people but are afraid we might hurt them? He said it has been proven by many studies and by the experience of mental health workers. If you think someone may be suicidal, ask. I have found that the best way to ask is, are you thinking about hurting yourself? You'll be surprised at the candor folks have when asked this question. Do you see why I've added A, (laughs) advocacy for the young generation, to the weekly lead? Imagine how you might change a person's life by your own loyalty to God's word, your encouragement to others where you walk in the room and every single room lights up or feels the atmosphere change because you've entered it. And then to be alert, to be aware, have your eyes open for the young generation in specific. They are empty and you, I pray, have the answer. But there is one bit of help in a wonderful book by uh, an ER doctor, Hope Always, that will help you be a better advocate. And finally, devoted to prayer. For those of you who know me over all these years, and I'm finding you and you're finding me again, you're coming back and saying, oh my gosh, I heard you speak in Spokane. Oh my gosh, I heard you speak in um, San Diego. Oh my gosh, I heard you speak on the East Coast and, and down in Florida. Well, in February of 1984, I made a decision to pray for one hour a day for the rest of my life. And you've probably heard this, that leaders are considered experts if they've done something for 10,000 hours. Well, here's my partner prayer notebook that I designed in 1984 for myself. And if you're on YouTube, you can see me holding up the My Partner Prayer Notebook. It's still available at Amazon.com. It's also an app at the App Store. It hasn't changed. I use it every day, the same system of talking to God and listening to God by writing But that decision I made is over 15,000 hours ago. And believe it or not, I'm different because of it. Am I an expert? Well, I know one thing. I have been with God one hour a day talking to Him and listening to Him and finding Him to be my comfort and my strength. You know, because I talk and listen to God, it means I have to both open my Bible every day and hear God speak to me, and I have to write down very specific, not general or vague prayers. And one of the first books I read on prayer, I would encourage you to read it, is by Andrew Murray, and it's called Christ in the School of Prayer. And it's it's a very basic book on prayer, but he says this, prayer and the Word are inseparably linked together. And I will probably quote this once a month during the weekly lead. They're they're inseparably linked together. Power in the use of either depends on the presence of the other. Now, Andrew Murray was, uh, over a hundred years ago, an Anglican priest who was part of a revival in South Africa. So his books are filled with prayer and always talk about revival. And you can see I always bring my little stack of Bible, revival, and prayer books with me, the classics. But what I've learned through spending time with God every day that is that he speaks to me very specifically when I read the Word. And we have 365 days of reading, so you'll never run out of listening to God's words. And that's it. You don't want to miss God's voice. So I want to ask you to share with your friends and your family and your co-workers or your roommates, the people that you love in your life, even strangers that you're just getting to know, if you want to join me in reading through the Bible in a year, if you want to become a leader with the tenets of leadership that will change you and the world around you, then invite them to join us weekly at the Weekly Lead Podcast. I'm also on YouTube at Becky Tirabasi, and I will encourage you weekly to spend time with God, make a difference in the world around you, change um, the atmosphere whenever you walk in, lead with great courage and great enthusiasm. And Join me on Saturdays for the Weekly Lead Podcast. 
I'll be here, and I look forward to seeing you too.